Hello everybody, this is Terry Britton and I'm uh, basically recording the manual for the voice meter program that you see over here which is a virtual audio mixer for Windows. It works for uh, XP, Vista, Windows 7, Windows 8. It's uh, really remarkably versatile. Uh, most amazing thing is that this is uh, being presented to the public as a fair trade, affordable for everyone program. It's donationware, free to download, free to use. It allows you to set the license price according to your means. And so if you find this application useful, you, uh, you pay whatever you can. It's suggested price is 10 euros or it's about $13, $15, up to maybe 20, 25 euros, uh, which would be 25, $30. So, uh, you know, and anything in that range, if you're actually using this program, go ahead, make a donation to the author. But if you have no means, donate some other way. Like I'm making a video um, as a way to supplement, as a as a contribution towards this thing. So I'm so enthusiastic about this program. Well, let's see. Um, here we have this amazing program that basically has several strips and of inputs, well, three strips, two hardware inputs, and one virtual input in the third position. And it has two buses, a A or audition or audit bus where you can monitor or send to speakers and not just uh, headsets or stereo speakers, you can send out to a surround system if you have such a th setup. And the B, I say B for broadcast. The B goes out to your recording or to your hangout on air or to your uh, voice over IP application like Google Voice or Skype. And they're separate so you can adjust their volumes individually so you can change your monitor volume versus your main thing. As you saw, I faded up the effects. Now, I've got the mic coming in over here in hardware input one. And I'm not monitoring it because there's no need for me to hear it. You know, I can, you know, I, I can hear my voice just fine coming through my head. <laughs> and there's a little bit of a delay, which is just a natural part of the way software works. It's called latency. Uh, which is a delay between the time I say a word and it travels through the system and comes out of the headset, which is, I've got the, my headset over here. Okay, so, so this thing is extremely powerful in that it lets you bring in two hardware inputs and actually more than that uh, if you use the virtual cable like I'm doing over here. And also this virtual input in the middle is your system audio sounds. So, so let's start talking about that. Uh, what kind of things could you bring in as hardware inputs? Well, like I say, I've got a microphone over here and there's several kinds of microphones. It's bring in a, a microphone, a cable input, a hi-fi cable is another offering by VB Audio. And I also have my Scarlett, my, uh, it's by Focusrite, it's the Scarlett 2i2 USB interface, which allows me to bring stuff in for my mixer, where I have a professional microphone plugged in that has phantom power. So, so I'm also able to bring stuff in for my mixer, you see, through, and that's through, uh, a, a, what's actually both an ASIO device and a Windows device. So bringing it in this way, I was able to bring it in as just a regular Windows device. But it does have the capability of sending signals in directly into the virtual input as an ASIO input also. But I'm using this input right now for my system sounds 
only. You're hearing the uh, ambient background noises of uh, people at a beach, and uh, which I'm cycling also with some what a spring afternoon type of a sound. And over here, I've got the music track coming in through the VB Audio Virtual Cable. That's another download you can get from the same place that you got the voice meter. So. But the basics of mixing is that you bring in various hardware devices and virtual devices through software. And this can be browser playback also. Like uh, playing back the sound from your, uh, your browser from the effects library at YouTube, for instance. Or, uh, or I downloaded these music beds that, I'm, that you're hearing right now also from YouTube. But I'm playing the music with the FUBAR music player that I've got directed to the cable. So it's coming in through here. This is actually the FUBAR media player. And over here I've got Windows media player playing the ambient nature sounds and the beach people at the beach sounds. So, uh, so the general idea is you've got these slots coming in and they go through these buses, the audition bus for monitoring. They go to the one of two outputs and always set your A1 first and then your A2 but A1 actually the master it's the master that everything else is driven off of whatever you set to here it becomes the master so the B then becomes the broadcast output that goes out to your software your recording software in this case because that's where the sound from this for this video is coming from Okay, so now we've covered the basics of, uh, of mixing. Um, let's just talk to a bit about this thing as being a virtual audio device. This thing is capable of bringing in signals of many, many different types. I've mentioned the ASIO capability. ASIO stands for uh, Audio Stream Input Output, ASIO. And that's a computer sound card driver protocol that came from uh, Steinberg, the people who made the Cubase digital audio workstation. And it provides really low latency, meaning lo very, very short delay from input to output. A low latency, high fidelity interface between a software application usually and a computer sound card. Now, a lot of digital audio workstations use ASIO in the Windows environment. So uh, it's extremely clean, extremely fast, and uh, it's, it's your high-end audio interface. However, most devices that you bring into your machine are going to be more like my microphone, which has, is a, has a WDM uh, version, okay, for my interface, USB interface, also my crappy uh, Logitech microphone that I'm not using anymore right over here um, it's also got a WDM and what WDM stands for is Windows driver model it's a audio interface it's handled by a protocol called Wasapi which sounds cool Wasapi <laughs> and uh, sounds like some kind of mustard you eat with su sushi doesn't it so uh, Wasapi is the latest Microsoft Audio Functions uh, library. It's, it's the best audio performance with low latency in the Windows system besides SEO. Uh, it's very good, but it's also got a couple of bugs. Wasapi came with a bug that made it kind of fall out of synchronization after a while, after an hour or so. And then you'd have to reset the engine. It came kind of a pain in the neck. All right, well, uh, then there's the KS stands for kernel streaming or direct kernel streaming. And that allows very low latency audio streaming. And that's been around since Windows XP, whereas WDM is started with Vista. Uh, now, it, it's really nice that you have this going back to XP, but not a whole lot of drivers were written to support the KS standard. So you have to check around. For instance, this microphone in my headset did have a WDM driver and an 
MME driver, we'll get to what that is in a second, but it didn't have a KS driver. Even though the actual playback portion, look, it does have a KS driver for the speakers, for the headset part. <laughs> Why they have one without the other, I'm not sure. But, um, so you have to see if they have the drivers, basically, if the driver supports the kernel streaming thing. So then you have your MME, uh, which is the other very, very common thing. It's been around a long time. I think it came out in Windows 98 or something like that. It's been around for a long time. It was the first universal standardized Windows audio. So uh, it's expected to work with just about anything that you could possibly connect. Uh, but it's got long latency times, long delay between the input and getting out again to your... So if you're monitoring your headset... Uh, it's taken a long time to get from your mouth through the system and to the ear earphones. That's why I don't even monitor mine, actually, because I hear my voice fine through my head. And unless I'm needing to hear it, like, I'll need to hear it in a minute to demonstrate some of these other controls. But, but if you don't have to be monitoring your voice, well, turn that off. Don't listen to the voice over the headset because there's always going to be an annoying delay. Even with ASIO, there'll be some delay. Uh, the other the other types that this supports that I just don't have any devices plugged in with drivers like that are the Wave RT and the DirectX uh, drivers. And that's just another type of driver. If you have a device that's that kind, and it'll show up in the list if it's supported by that and you'll be able to uh, select it so rule of thumb is try out your WDM try to get that to work mess around with the the buffer settings which I'll show you a little later and try to get that to work that's going to be your best bet for uh, Windows since Vista and uh, the KS is going to be your second best because it's also very fast very good latency in fact sometimes you can get even better lower latency with that than you can with WDM once in a while it all depends on your configuration though it depends on the combination of elements that are in your system and so it's always going to be some experimentation because this audio stuff is is tricky because you were making we're really making it do a lot <laughs> I mean we're allowing it to mix different uh, bit rates and uh, and sample rates and all this kind of stuff and it all comes out the other end all working together in harmony as a mix that goes into your software so that's pretty impressive but anyway the main point is that you've got this this incredible amount of uh, capability going on in terms of your selection of inputs and also of outputs Again, you have the WDM, the KS, the MME, and for the A1, you also have an ASIO output. But there's always a virtual ASIO output coming out of the B as well. The B has always got a virtual ASIO input and a virtual ASIO output coming out of this slider at all times. It'll always show up as a stereo thing, but it'll actually send up to eight channels. So, uh, as you can see, there's eight channels over here in the uh, in, in this thing. You just don't see them all. You have to kind of set it up, and I'll show you how to set it up so that they, all the channels work. If you have a surround sound thing, or DVD audio, or you got a surround sound set up um, for, heck, you, you could use this as a DJ in a surround environment and move sounds around the room to sweep around the room. <laughs> or in a theater environment and uh, and change the location of things for, you know to be anywhere in the midst of the speakers well we'll get to that in a second so I guess you got the main point is you got your input strips they go to buses that lead out to these sliders so you get your A bus is your audit, audition uh, slider and then you get your B bus is your broadcast slider okay which goes to your recorder now uh, each one of these can go through a bunch of different little uh, 
little processing things. You've got these, the color panel, which I've got set over here to give my voice a slightly richer sound. I'll put it back to where it was. This is no processing at all. And I can make it more trebly, or I can make it uh, very trebly, or make it very mid-rangey. I can make it really bassy. So I had it just kind of over here and just to add a little bit of roundness to the to the sound okay and if you move it up above this point you get a slap back echo effect where it's you know i don't know how useful you're going to find that but uh you have it available if you want to play around with that so so but i i found it just a, a little bit of a little bit of treatment made a nice kind of a sound so um so there you go also, you have an audibility slider. It's a gate and a compressor built into one. Uh, the gate idea, let's bring it about 2.1. Okay, now let me, uh, I'm going to mute these two so you can just hear the microphone for a second. Okay, now watch when I stop talking. Silence. So that's what's going on with that. A gate clamps down to total silence, gets rid of that room, air, hiss. It, it kind of pulls it down so it's out of the way. And so that way, when you're talking, your microphone only is active while there's actually sound, and then it cuts out of the way. So that's the idea behind that. This is also compressing a little bit. I recommend to use this very, very sparingly, like I'm doing right now. <laughs> Around 2.1 is the most I can get. I go to 2.5 and it's too much. It's compressing a little bit too, so you get a little more of that kind of radio sound. You push this too hard and you start getting an AM radio type of a sound where it's just, you know, just kind of this wall of sound coming at you. The voice doesn't seem to have any dynamics to it so uh, so just play with this real easy very gently and yeah, to fuse it at all uh, any of these controls by the way if you double click them they go back to zero there you go and this would if I double click these yeah, double click and it goes back to the center now inside of here is also another uh, cool thing if you right click on the panel it takes you to the 3D position panel. And this is where you can pan things around in a 3D space with a multi-speaker environment. So we'll get to how you set that up in a second. Uh, you also have a solo button, like you have right there. It makes it so that all that's coming out is just, you're just hearing that one thing. And you can solo multiple things at once, okay? So you can have various types of uh, soloing situations. The inverse of that is the mute, where you can mute, you can mute a channel, and so it's not coming out of any, either of the buses. Okay, so, uh, so you have solo and mute. You also have mono. If you got a stereo signal like I've got, yeah. Well, I've already summed my single mic to Stere to stereo using the balance control in this mixer over here that's providing it its phantom power. So there's no need to use the mono. But if I plugged right into my USB interface directly, then the mic would be stuck in the left channel and there would be nothing in the right channel unless I used a Y chord splitter or something, which is pretty messy. So I could hit this mono button and that would put the mic in the center so it's in both channels so people are hearing it through the center. So uh, so that's the idea of the purpose of the mono button, primarily. Now there's, uh, over here on this side, you've got a base mid-range mid, uh, mid and high controls for the sound that's coming in through here. This can be browser audio, it can be a media player, it can be anything that you send to the default sound because you know, we're going to set this thing up so that voice meter is the default uh, the default music 
player, well, the sound sound device. We set it up as the default playback device and as the default recording device. So coming through here, again, you have a position panner that lets you pan left, right, but also front and rear. You have the A and B buses and slider. You have a solo and a mute, and you also have this funny little MC. Well, I think it's time for me to go ahead and show you some of what I'm talking about there. So let me bring up my, uh, my sound control. Now this is what you get to by right clicking on your little speaker icon and uh, selecting playback or recording devices. And if I go down here, I've got my voice meter input. And the main idea is that you right click on it. Like I'm going to right click on this and you set as the default device and the default communication device. Obviously this is already set to that. You'll see a little green check mark. And uh, I recommend setting it to the default for both communication and, uh, there we go, regular default device and default communication device. Then you go to recording and you do the same thing for that. Okay, so you get the green check mark, default device and default recording device. And then go back to playback and with this highlighted, hit this configure button. And now you can uh, see where you change it to stereo, quadraphonic, 5.1 surround or 7.1 surround. This is where you set it up so that these positioning tools work. Okay, so if I wanted to be able to pan it around because I have a multi-speaker environment that I'm feeding with a Toslink optical cable or a SPDIF cable or a HDMI cable into my receiver, for instance, or, or like many computers have the, uh, the dedicated six outputs for the 5.1 sound, uh, you know, subwoofer and uh, rear speakers, front speakers and the center speaker. Then you uh, you pick this, and that suddenly brings that capability into existence, where now you can use it. The other thing you want to do is you want to go in and, under advanced, you want to set this to be consistent, where it's uh, probably 16-bit 44.1 is what MP3s are generally made. Uh, this sound is so superior to an MP3 that. I just say, you know, go with it. It's C this is CD quality audio. It's not DVD quality, but the difference with the DVD quality is primarily that you can get louder sounds. And uh, uh, and if you're recording something like pianos, we actually waited for the, you know, if you hit a chord and waited for the whole thing to fade out, then yeah, a DVD quality audio. It's, you know, 24-bit, 48K is it's going to let you have that. And the 24-bit is going to let you get way louder. Uh, the nice thing about 24 is you can... There's less trouble with overloading on your mic. Uh, it's, it's not going to be as big a problem. Because it lets you get so darn loud. I mean, we're talking jet engine stuff. You can record... And if you're doing that kind of loud stuff, that's great. But if you're doing mostly uh, normal music quality, music, you know, uh, content and voice, then you really never hit these levels of volume uh, where you need that kind of extension. And the 16-bit 44.1 takes up less hard drive space to smaller files. And it's what the standard is for YouTube videos. That's what you got to have for YouTube video and uh, CDs, of course. That's just the standard. Most MP3s you're going to make, you're going to make them from 16-bit 44. Now, if you're getting into an auto file thing, an audio file thing, you know, uh, then mess around and learn some more how to use these other settings. I recommend probably having everything at the same setting uh, is probably a good idea. In other words, all of your devices set up. If you go for 16-bit 44.1, 
said everything that way. Not necessarily, though. Voice meter is very, very flexible, and it can take multiple devices. It's uh, what they call a multi-point um, <laughs> processing device. So if you got one device that's 48, another one's 44.1, one is 96, uh, it's fine. They'll mix together. They'll work. They'll work just fine. But for some applications, uh, you do definitely want to keep them all the same. And sometimes when you're messing with buffers or you're getting clicks and pops, sometimes one of the solutions might be to make some of your devices be the same bit rate and sample rate. Okay? So anyway, just you've been notified about that now. I just wanted to let you know because it can, uh, it can be a, a real pain. Now, if you do bring in the surround sound, most surround sound, most movies, uh, put all the vocal, all the voices, anything vocal, is in the center channel. So, if you want to just hear the music, the movie soundtrack, and the effects, then you can mute the center channel with this button right here. So that's what that is. That's the mute center button. So that's really pretty cool too okay let's see let's move on what else can we talk about? well I, we probably should cover the next phase of the manual really is step one step two step three of how to set this thing up and the first step is always to set the a1 uh, output device it's the master off of which everything else runs okay uh, it's it's setting the primary clock off of which everything else is going to be working off of and it also sets the latency from the buffer setting that you set for this device so uh, so here I've got a WDM you know my headset set as the uh, as the device and then you click in here on top of the A and it opens up this thing you also get to that from menu system settings options and as you can see my WDM I've got it uh, the default is 512 if you when you open this thing up it's going to be set to 512 but I had to fiddle around to get rid of all the clicks and make it so I never ever had any clicking or dropouts I was getting little dropouts every so often because of my system and it's unique to my system what my settings are going to have to be just as it's unique to your system what your settings are going to have to be so so i clicked in here and i set 448 as the setting and that worked made everything work just great okay i didn't have to touch these because i'm not using the wdm i mean i'm not using the mme or the ks anywhere and uh, and as you see, I've got my preferred main sample rate is 44.1. And I'm using the normal engine mode, even though you do have a swift mode that's an experimental mode uh, that is supposed to help latency and clicks and pops and stuff if you get them. I'm going to be coming back to this dialogue in a second. But uh, I did set because this music content that you're hearing is at 48k sample rate still 16-bit but 48k I went ahead and set my cable which is WDM but in the uh, Windows settings here which I went and hit on myself there we go in the Windows settings I set the cable input and output right here and I went ahead and I set it to 48 because my music content is 48 so I figured I just let it make us get a smooth run in and then let it convert once it comes into voice meter so that's that's another thing you can do if, you're, if your music content is all 48 then you might consider doing that but if it's all mixed up, like most people's music collections are, then uh, then just don't worry about it and let, uh, let, let the software figure it out because it does do sample rate conversions and stuff on the fly. 
But I just wanted to let you see that this is a possibility. You have all these choices. And look at this particular device, this cable. It has everything from one channel and two channel inputs of 16-bit and 24-bit at all these different sampling rates. So, uh, so you, you get the versatility there. And uh, it's just a matter of fiddling around with it and getting used to it so that you can make, uh, make everything work. Okay, uh, sample rates uh, from 32K, 44.1, 48K, 88.2, and 96K, which is super high fidelity. Uh, it's, it's all there. You can do it all. Plus you've got, but, but whatever you set in here, whatever this buffer is, keep in mind that's going to be the, the master buffer for your, uh, the setting, I should say. This will become the setting, whatever you put your A1 to, is going to be the setting for your SCO devices as well for the latency. So uh, so that's pretty much where you'll be setting that. So the lower you can set it, the better for your SCO devices down the road. Okay, so, um, so step number two, after you've selected an input device, is to select, I mean, after you select an output device and your A1 in particular, then you select an input device. And again, stick with WDM if it, you can make it work, fiddle with the buffers and uh, try to get it to work. And if not though, go to KS or go to the MME and eventually you'll find a setup that works with your, with your equipment and uh, you can pretty much keep that in mind as far as those settings are concerned. Write it down and, and see if you can use them over and over again. In my case, I'm using WDM device for my uh, Focusrite Scarlet USB interface. I'm using WDM for the cable, the virtual cable. There's members of free download from same place you got the voice meter from. Just go to the very, very bottom of the page. You'll see the virtual cable, the virtual audio cable link. And then I've got this set uh, at the 44.1.16 bit in the Windows dialog, which again I seem to I seem to have a love of closing this window for some reason. And. Uh, that's double click here in advanced and you see I have that set to 16 bit 44 one doesn't mean you can only send it 16 bit 44 one it just means that that's that's the sample rate it's going to be sending out okay alrighty um, let's see now remember that if you can get the KS to work That'd be great. Uh, KS sometimes can be better than WDM. The lower you can get the buffer, the better. So if KS is letting you go down to 256 or something like that, go for it. Go as low as you can go. If you can go to 128 and get away with it and it's, everything stays steady and stable, go for it. It's uh, That's this A1 setting and whatever device you set there, I picked a KS device instead. I would be able to go to the uh, system settings and set this buffering KS thing to as low as I can go without getting clicking and noise. And uh, and then again, whatever I have A1 set to, that's going to determine my ASIO settings for for later on down the road where I might want to bring in a virtual instrument or work with a digital audio workstation. So, there you have that. And uh, now, so you have these big steps. Step one, step two. Okay, step one, A1. Step two, an input. And step three is deciding whether you're going to monitor in real time. I don't. I turn this off because I don't want to hear the delay. Uh, like If you get it low enough, maybe it won't bother you. Um, I do want to show something else, and I did it again, look at that. 
you tell me to stop closing this window. Um, for your your microphones, anything that you got in the recording thing, there's a listen tab. Unless you really know in your total control, you know why you did it. Always make sure this is unchecked. You never want to have to listen to this device check because it messes with voice meter and voice meter is already doing this basically. However, what this does, in case you're wondering, listen, lets you direct an input to an output right here. So you basically select the output that you want to direct an input to and check that box. And then it goes, this, this microphone, or in this case, would then be sent out to this output through Windows itself. Now one nice use of it that I can see is using these virtual audio cables because you can get more than just the one. You get the one free one, but then he also offers two more that you can get and uh, use as inputs. And you could send your, uh, you know, you could send 20 mics to, <laughs> to a single one because they act like a mixer. Uh, or I could even send a second mic, even though I've right now got a, a, a media player going to this, I could still send a second microphone like, uh, like the, the microphone I'm not using for my Logitech right here. I could still send that to the cable and, and try to use it. Um, so let's go ahead and give it a try. We'll see if it works. Let's bring this out here. Here we are. Okay. As soon as I hit apply, what are we going to get? Oh yes, there you have it. So, so now I'm sending this to the to the cable. And uh, oh no, I am not. There we go. Okay, so now I'm sending that to the cable. There we are. Okay, is that working? Uh, I don't see that's working. I don't think it's doing anything. I don't see anything coming in. Uh. Well, there's some kind of signal going in, but I don't hear anything happening. So, anyway. <laughs> a second ago, I sent it right to itself, and I could hear it just fine. Of course, I thought I had success. But, um, anyway, again, more experimentation. Oh, another thing, and I went and closed that, didn't I? Maniac. Another thing you want to make sure is uh, your levels... Uh, are high enough in here under levels okay so here's line out properties okay and uh, want to make sure that my I'm sorry I had the wrong one so right next to listen is levels make sure that is high enough you know or at a hundred so that you're uh, you're sending all the signal to voice meter that you can now if you're overloading turn it down a little bit okay if you're consistently overloading this is where you would you would trim it. Okay, this is your trim point. So, uh, anyway, that's that's uh, that's that'll keep you on the on the right track as far as controlling your inputs. So now you have step three: is the setting, and I did it again. Is the setting as I already showed you of setting it up as a as the default input uh, playback and the default recording device so that's your step three as you're setting it up okay so, and now and look at that i'm not going to do it i'm not going to do it there we go okay i didn't close it amazing um so now it's you can play your media player and everything through the virtual input you can play browsers through the you can play anything it plays back through the default playback device We'll play back through voice meter and come in right here through this virtual input through this slider. And that includes uh, DVD players and anything surround sound, stuff like that. If you've got that, if you have voice meter configured, like I showed you, where you go to playback, click on it, hit configure, and pick the 5.1. Okay. All right. So, uh, 
So we're near the end. You got. So you have that virtual. Um, by the way, if you're playing a DVD and you're going out to B, you will only see the two channels represented. If you go out to A, it'll, the meter changes to show all six. That may change in the future, but right now you get six appearing in the A because they're figuring you're probably going out some digital output device to a receiver. Uh, although, like I said, a lot of the computers have the six outputs for the analog outs to uh, for six speakers for surround also. Anyway, you'll you'll wind up with six meters here, just like you have over here. But although the B is sending six, it only shows you the first two. All right, as far as the metering is concerned. So uh, let's see. Well, then he goes in. He shows you a bit about Skype input. Basically, uh, it, what does in the manual, he's just mainly discussing the fact that several devices can select what the output device and the speaker, what the microphone and the speaker device is. So you can send, set voice meter up as the microphone in any of those. Okay, that includes Skype, Google Voice, Hangouts on Air, or Hangouts, regular Hangouts in Google, um, you know, G+, Google+. It includes uh, three uh, media players that I know of that you can control the output. Um, you can send to a virtual cable or to this or to, uh, well, you can send, you can control the output using Windows Media Player, using VLC Media Player, and using FUBAR Media Player. Those are three that allow you to control where you're going to output to. I have some videos on my channel that show how to set it if you are interested in changing that setting. Uh, to do it like what I did here, I'm sending FUBAR media player out to the cable. But similarly, you send, you, you pick up the microphone as the voice meter output, okay, the virtual output from the B. And you can also uh, play back through the cable in Skype or in Google Voice or in Hangouts on Air. You can play back through the cable and that way you can set it up so that you can be mo hearing the people that are talking without sending them talking back out to the show, you know, themselves. You just turn off the B and only audition it. And uh, so so you just heard that that sound disappeared and so I could still hear it just fine well that would be a similar scene if I sent Skype to this cable I would bring it into audition so I could hear the person's talking but their talking wouldn't go back out to the broadcast just I would be in broadcast and I could have system sounds also going out to the broadcast see what I'm saying out to the Skype call or out to the hangout on air a Google voice call any VOIP call that lets you uh, select this, this kind of stuff. Now, uh, I already showed you these positioning things in the, Google, the color panel and the equalizer and the uh, audibility thing. But uh, there is a mention about one last thing uh, to do with, uh, with, these, or with the system. Because you can use it with Skype and stuff, so go to communications, the communications tab in here. It's right next to the playback and recording. Communications. Click it to do nothing when Windows detects communications activity. Because otherwise, if you're using this as voice meter as your sound source for the calls, it's going to turn down the output of voice meter unless you say do nothing. See, it's going to reduce the volume of other sounds. Well, what's it mean by other sounds? What's it know about other sounds? It doesn't know what you're doing. So just tell it to do nothing and everything will be good. And it's recommended not to use built-in mics in a laptop because the sound is very bad in most built-in mics anyway. Plus you got the speakers usually right in the thing and you're going to get feedback from the laptop into the mic. And uh, 
Although Skype and Hangouts have canceling circuitry that helps cancel out that feedback effect, it's still just not a good idea, and those mics are terrible anyhow. Okay, now like I said, you can connect an ASIO signal, an ASIO signal, which can be a virtual keyboard or, or it can be a digital audio workstation with up to eight stereo, uh, eight channels, eight, eight channels for four different, uh, four different stereo outputs. So you could have like four, you could have a synthesizer and a, uh, two synthesizers and a virtual piano and some other sound device, uh, all coming out into, at, through ASIO out of like a VST playback device or something like that. Uh, or out of your DAW, if you're using like Arter or, well, any, lot, you know, any of the really cool uh, digital audio workstations. I'll usually allow you to also put in uh, musical instruments. So you can, you can play these virtual instruments through this thing and bring them right in through the virtual ASIO input, they bring it right in here the same way it does the browser sounds and other sounds. But now it's that low latency, super hi-fi ASIO signal. Also out of the B, it's always sending an ASIO signal and can send up to eight channels. These eight channels can all go out as, um, as an ASIO for recording as well. So, so you get a lot of power there you just simply select voice meter as the input and output device uh, when you're setting up your digital audio workstation or your virtual instrument. You select voice meter and everything's working. Okay, so uh, let's see. Now there's some special routing. I should, I should mention all these different things here. Uh, the special routing buttons on the sides here, they apply to your, uh, both your audition and your broadcast sliders independent. So the mix down can take a, a DVD playback 5.1 and mix it down to stereo so you can hear it over your headphones. Okay. As one, for instance, uh, it can also take a stereo signal and do with stereo repeat, send it out through the broadcast thing or through the A, if you've got like an SP diff or toss link or, um, or HDMI connection to your receiver, just send out the, or, or the analog connectors. You can do stereo repeat and send a stereo signal where it repeats three more times so that it's coming out of all the speakers, okay? Up to eight speakers. <laughs> And uh, that's great for parties, fantastic for parties. Oh, another trick for the parties is, if you're doing that coming out of the media player, is uh, pull back your uh, medium, the middle slider here, the mid-range. Pull it back a little bit, or a lot, and uh, it makes a notch for the voices to cut through so people don't have to shout over the music because yeah, it's, it's, you've created a notch in the audio where the voice normally sits, which is in the mid-range. So that's a little party trick. It lets you play the music pretty loud and yet people don't have to shout to hear each other. Uh, so Stereo Repeat does the opposite of mix down. It takes stereo and repeats it so it makes for a surround sound thing. The composite signal, this is fantastic for the digital audio workstation application. This, this gets, sends out uh, the full mix, okay, either the A or the B sends out the regular mix down a stereo mix or whatever right stereo mix and it also sends pre-fader it sends out in other words before the fader hits before any effects it sends the raw signal from each one of these things stereo out as well so you get a total of eight outs you get the mix down and stereo out from this pre-fader stereo out from that pre-fader stereo out from this pre-fader. This is the full volume input signal. And it's sent out to a digital audio workstation so that you can uh, record it, record all the, the original parts pre-mixing, right? Without any sliders 
and get everything at the full volume, full, full fidelity. But now you can mix it down and make a professional thing. So this is great if you're doing a live gig and you get all this live stuff going on. You've been pushing your sliders around and stuff, but you made some mistakes. So you had some coughing in your mic or, you know, like my biggest problems that aren't tisk noise I tend to make. It drives me crazy. Why can't I get rid of that? But, uh, but it lets you go in and do some pre some post processing went to make a final final version for professional okay and apply effects and do all those things you can do inside of a digital workstation but this is a great tool because this is letting you output uh that all that stuff without even sweating it without even breaking a sweat just just click the composite button and it's outputting all right so uh Yes, yeah, I think channel one and two is the usual bus stereo out, and three and four is input one before the gain fader, and five and six is input two before the gain fader, and seven and eight is uh, the virtual input channel before the gain fader. So, so that's really cool. All right, um, and it's also good. Imagine using that for like a voice over IP, a Skype interview or something, or a conference, and you can do post production of the whole thing afterwards cut it up and get a really good get a really good recording of it now there's also this menu up here and it's got some things like restarting the engine if you got it if you're required usually that's because something started going crazy uh to click some pops like a lot of them or a robot sound type of thing where things went so out of sync that they can't even come back in again they, they uh it clicked and wouldn't stop clicking. It just basically does a robot voice. It's terrible. And that means you have to adjust your buffers and fiddle around with selecting WDM versus KS versus MME versus ASIO. You have to start juggling and figuring out why this particular combination of hardware and software inputs is making for problems but there, you can usually always juggle and figure it out. So, uh, in fact, every time you do change the buffer setting or select a different device, you restart the engine anyway. So, and you can also load settings and save settings. Uh, it's great that you can save the settings. What's, what you're saving is all the button positions and the slider positions uh, and these settings in here. You don't, you're not saving the input devices the hardware because that's that changes depending on what you've got plugged in and so since this actually goes by numbers inside windows go the enumeration and it just signs a number to what's plugged in uh, everything moves around many you plug something else in or unplug something and so but what what was number one is now number three and and it messes up the whole list so it doesn't save that you still have to click and select your inputs but it saves all these other things all these button settings and things like that so once you've got a, a mix down uh, or a configuration that you're using a lot over and over again then you can load it back in again like say for Skype calls you just load in your Skype calls config and and the buttons are all pressed right that way you don't have to worry about forgetting to turn off the broadcast for the Skype call you know so he's not hearing himself you're not getting he's not hearing echo of his own voice you're not forgetting any of that you just load in the thing and that's already turned off the beat's already turned off and this happens all the time you always think you won't forget but you do all right there uh, these reset settings sets, sets everything to zero turns on all a's and b's and uh, sets everything to zero all the sliders and it forces you to select a new a1 device because it basically zeros out everything so it'll start blinking at you and flashing, warning you to select an A1 device, because that's the first thing you always have to do since that's the main clock off of which everything else uh, runs. A uh, system tray lets you run the thing as startup, um, show app, and then it'll run in the system tray. You'll see a little icon for it. Show app on startup just means that when it starts up, it shows itself right away. And always visible, just keeps it on top. Uh, so you can't wind up burying it under under with other windows. You can also hook the volume keys to these 
in these various ways so they are connected to your keyboard somehow. Uh, these two just are connecting to the normal keyboard uh, like volume control things. So you can connect your level of your output A or your level of your input to the volume control. Likewise, you can control these, the same type of thing. Yeah, you've seen system settings now a few times. A new thing is MIDI mapping, and uh, that lets you use a MIDI controller to actually control all the different sliders and things on here. And shut down, just shuts down voice meter. So, uh, so that's the the big stuff right there. Now, uh, I did did want to go over. I'm going to skip over the case studies because. They, uh, they're covered by themselves in other videos that I've done. But I just wanted to just talk a little bit more about this little uh, thing right here. This is, like I was saying, changing these buffer settings can have a huge effect on whether you're getting clicks and pops or robot voices and all that kind of stuff. And it, it affects your A1 device primarily, okay? so. You select your A1, your device, and if it's WDM, you fiddle with your buffers in here until you get a clean sound that's consistent and lasts a long time. Uh, if you pick the BKS device, then this is where you would set your buffer. You're getting this? And so it's gonna affect the A primary device. And uh, if you had to go to MME, then you would select it from here. You just click on it and it shows you a bunch of choices. Um, you can select a preferred main sample rate and uh, that'll probably relate with whatever software that you're going to be outputting to. If you're making YouTube videos and stuff like I'm doing right now, you probably want 44.1 at the 16-bit. There's an engine mode of Swift that's uh, an experiment to try to solve problems with some dropouts and uh, clicks and pops and things. You can try it out if you're running into issues. Just try it. Also this out A1, out A2, it's a synchro delay. It lets you set a certain amount of milliseconds to, to delay one signal so it matches the other. This is because these, the A1 and A2 get their signals completely independent of each other. And they can have different latencies, different delay times inherent in just the way they are. They're, they're hardware. Okay, so you can slow down one basically so that it matches the other, and by adding some some milliseconds of delay, and so that way the faster one is no longer faster. You you you've told it no no hold off till you match the other one that's a little bit slower, and then they come out at the same time. So yeah, you're wrecking up your latency a little bit for the fast fast one. But now at least you have the things coming out of your headphones and out of your speakers at the same time. So that's what that is all about. You'll probably want to keep it a float 32 LSB for ASIO type, but it has the uh, integer 32 LSB as well as the choice <clears throat> in case you find you need it. But that's, uh, that covers that. Let me just get a quick little sip. All right, so last but not least is the uh, known issues. Now, if you get the choppy sound, like I said, fiddle around with those buffer settings. Uh, if you got it while in WDM, mess with the buffer settings, try a higher buffer, try a lower sometimes. Sometimes the 512 default is too high. Um, if you just can't find one, try the MME or the KS and uh, see if you can get get that to stabilize just some devices just don't seem to want to behave uh don't ask me why i found that the microphone that's built into this thing <coughs> was causing a lot of trouble and one minute i retired this thing all kinds of problems and clicks and robot things issues went away completely so sometimes it's just a hardware issue. You have, the only way to get around is retire the device. Um, I'll put it, like I said, 
I, output A1 and A2 aren't always synchronized, and you can fix it the way I just showed you. Um, if the stream stops and it can't even sound, no meter is going, sometimes that's because you changed the configuration in the control panel or you added a device, uh, you tripped over your USB cord, unplugged something. And so it can't find your devices anymore. It has to reconfigure. Sometimes, usually, just restarting the audio engine will make it re take a new look and a fre refresh the order of the uh, devices so that you can select them again. And that, uh, or you can just reselect another audio device from the uh, A1 or input one or whatever, and that'll restart the stream also automatically. But, uh, but then, if everything stops and is corrupted after working great for hours, well, <laughs> it might be the wasabi bug. And so, uh, but but it's already default. It's already set by default to try to defeat that. That's what this uh, right here, WDM input exclusive mode set to no. That's the default attempting to keep <clears throat> the wasabi bug from making things going crazy. So, uh, <clears throat> but anyway, the workarounds to disable that input thing, like it's already done in default, or use MME or KS audio device on inputs instead of the WDM device driver. The funny thing is, is that using the WDM audio device on the output, it seems to work okay in any mode, even if it's an exclusive mode. So it's mostly is something to do with the effect on the uh, the the inputs go figure anyway so there you go there's your hour-long webinar covering all these different aspects I hope I covered everything and made it clear and kept it interesting enough that you now feel like you know everything you'll ever want to know about this program at least enough to get it get it working and and start having fun with it and uh, exploiting the incredible capabilities that it's got okay so uh, Good talking to you, and have fun experimenting. Take care now.